For our final panelists today, before we go into the greeting section of our action, I want to welcome Arnold August. Arnold is an author and a journalist based in Montreal, Quebec. He is a contributing editor for the Canada Files and a member of the International Manifesto Group. Arnold writes regularly about Canada Venezuela affairs and is the author of three books on US, Cuba, Latin America. Cuba, Democracy in Cuba and the 1997-1998 elections. Cuba and its neighbors, Democracy in Motion, and Cuba, US relations, Obama and beyond. His works have been translated into many languages, including Spanish and Farsi. Thank you, Arnold, the floor is yours. Thank you, Allison. Uh, well, it's a, a great honor for me to be on, on this panel, uh, especially, for example, from uh, through, with our comments from Venezuela and amongst that delegation from Venezuela, I might I should emphasize that it's really great once again to see the smiling face of Lewis. It brings back very fond memories that the Solidarity Movement had with Lewis in the Venezuelan embassy in Ottawa and hopefully in the not too far future, he or another representative of the uh, Venezuelan government will be in that embassy. And I also have to say hello to Roger. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Roger, but the last time we were together was in 2008 in California when the task force along with others hosted a, uh, a book launch of my first book in 2008. We saw each other then. I think it's the first time we are so-called together. So I have to say congratulations to the Vancouver folk, folks for everything they're doing, for uniting people, but also for reuniting people. For example, in the case of me and Lewis and Roger Harris. Now the basic theme that I will be dealing with is the issue of how the US openly and the Trudeau government hypocritically use or tries to use Cuba as a pawn in their war against Venezuela. Now, the US policy uh, against Venezuela is very well known. The Canadian policy regarding Venezuela through the Lima Group and everything else since then is also notorious. It is also quite well known the, how the United States tries to cynically separate Cuba and Venezuela by putting pressure on Cuba when they are in a very difficult condition, basically saying to Cuba, look, if you don't shape up, drop Maduro and go with us, you're gonna be even more in worse trouble economically and politically. So this, this is well known, but what is not that known or in my view should be discussed further is the role of Canada. When I talk about the role of Canada, um, uh, you know, I, I'm talking about the use of the Trudeau liberal image. And what does it serve? It serves to provide a cover to this savage nature of US imperialism, whether it's Trump or Biden. Now, how, how, do they, how does the Canada do this? Uh, I've been working on this for quite a while and others do as well. It's the, it, the use of what we call dog whistle diplomacy. I hope the translators found an appropriate word for that dog whistle diplomacy, but to make sure, I'll spell it out. I'll just read it out so it's easy to understand. But I think it's crucial to understand the role of Canada and the role of liberals such as Obama before. Dog, dog, uh, dog whistle diplomacy is the use of coded language in political messaging to mean one position to one country such as Cuba, but the same words or as important or more importantly, the obvious omission of words, this takes on another meaning for the US government. So this diplomacy is mainly used by liberals, it's very subtle, and I think it's, in my view, is far more dangerous than the open conservative uh, position, whether it's a Trump or a conservative party in Canada or, 
or whatever. Now, let's just have, let's just spell that. Out. How do how does Canada use this dog whistle diplomacy with the liberal poster boy face? It's important not only for Canada, in my view, but in general to understand American policy when Canada is involved in it. Let us just take an example. During the pandemic, it was over two years, right? Canada's ambassador to the United Nations spoke at the UN. That was his chance. Would he speak out in favor of Cuba and against the blockade? No, he did speak out on Venezuela, of course, nothing on Cuba. In another UN General Assembly meeting, Mr. Trudeau was there himself. He did not say a word against US sanctions against Cuba. That's what I mean, dog whistle diplomacy. You know, they, they say, you know, Cuba gets the message. Well, he, he could have said something worse than that, but the United States definitely got the message. You know, we may not have the same policy towards Cuba as the U.S. does, but look how we, how we, we do not call U.S. out publicly when it, is, it counts, when, it, it, makes, when it, it can make a dent in the U.N. assembly. Let me give you another example of this dog whistle diplomacy. The vote took place last year in the United Nations General Assembly, as it takes place every year, aside from the two years that it was postponed as a result of the pandemic, the vote took place. Now, before the vote, every country has the right to say something to in, in support of the U.S. The sorry, in support of the Cuban resolution to lift the blockade against Cuba. It was great to watch. Small countries, medium countries from Asia, Africa, Latin America, and even some countries in Europe spoke out against the U.S. blockade and called on people to vote in favor of the Cuban resolution. Well, Mr. Trudeau was there. While all these countries were talking, representing, in my view, the vast majority of the population of humanity, Mr. Trudeau just sat on his chair. He did not stand up. He did not say a word. When it could have, he could have impacted the entire public opinion on such an important point. So, you know, th this is how... There you go. So like on that vote on the United Nations, the dog whistle diplomacy is Trudeau effectively saying to the US, US, I know, I know, you know, we have to vote against the blockade. We have no choice, you know, because in Canada, we would be hung if we did not, if we did not vote against the blockade. But I hope you understand, you know, we are not, we, we still understand your position uh, in support of the uh, applying the blockade. We won't hinder that at all. We're understanding. Uh, so so they, they wink indirectly to the United States, go ahead with the US blockade against Cuba, but we, know, we will just vote against it very discreetly. Now, uh, the next offensive took place by United States and Canada was um, uh, started in February, 2021. Not everyone knows about it, but in February, 2021, you had a new shift to the right by the Canadian government with regards to Cuba. In February, 2021, the uh, US uh, Canadian uh, uh, foreign minister at the time, Garneau, had a, a, a direct meeting with Blinken, Biden's new, U, new secretary of state. They discussed all kinds of things. The Trudeau say, look, we don't agree with your position of blockade against Cuba. Cuba is our friend. No. On the contrary, the readout of that meeting between Blinken and Garno at the time says, we are very much concerned. Of course, Venezuela, they're very concerned about that. We're not surprised. But we're very concerned about the issue of human rights in Cuba. That's Trudeau, supposedly a friend of Cuba. Instead of saying, Blinken, you know, we are not your lackeys. We want you to, to take, get that blockade off Cuba. And, and reflecting the sentiment of millions of Canadians, but he said nothing. So this is how the dog was, uh, dog was so works. And, uh, you know, I mean, with the vote, you know, the position, you know, against the blockade and all that, you know, Trump gets the green light, go ahead with the blockade, you know, even we're against it. We understand your blockade against Cuba, but there's issue of human rights and all that after all. And we European countries, we civilized countries, we have to stick together against those uncivilized countries of the South. 
That is the basic message, not that crude, but that's what it amounts to. And to Cuba, the dog whistle is sort of a very meek indication. Yeah, well, you know, we had to do that, you know, at least it could have been worse. We could have supported sanctioning Cuba. That's how low Canadian foreign policy has got. They didn't, didn't really say it, but I'm trying to bring out the point how this operates in the international political sphere. Now, the other thing that came out, uh, uh, very important, we all remember the July 11th protests in Havana in July 2021, right? There was a big thing about it. I'm not going to go into it. Now, do you know, not many people know about it. The Canadian government, Trudeau, made three statements explicitly in support of the color revolution in Cuba. This is a friend of Cuba. And amongst those three declarations, he just switched gears. And instead of talking about the Cuban government, he talked about the Cuban regime. How low can you get? Trudeau, do you know, know that your government has relations, diplomatic relations with Cuba? Why are you calling it a regime? This is just you know, one or two examples. And they made another statement. Once those who were involved in these illegal riots on July 11th, they were brought to trial and understandably sentenced. Trudeau made another statement, this time calling out the Cuban government using the Biden, Trump, et cetera, uh, 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 talking points, political crackdown. If you, if you Google political crackdown, you'll find it all over the place when it comes to Cuba. And amongst those who issue these statements, you have Trudeau, Trump before, Biden now, et cetera. Now, I just want to, you know, raise one more point. Like, I, before the, um, the pandemic took place, uh, I organized a cross country, well, international tour on my third book on Cuba in 2020 and 2021, I believe, until the pandemic or the pandemic broke out, including in Vancouver. Now, in all of these meetings, whether it's Canada, United States, the United Kingdom as well, and even in Cuba, you know what the, 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 my two most popular positions were? One, talking about Trudeau and Canada, colonialism at home, imperialism abroad. That is very important, and people applaud it. And the other thing that people like, when I said, Trudeau, when are you going to stand up for our friend Cuba? People stand up and applaud. That's true. This has to be brought more often because, you know, Cuba is being used as a pawn against Venezuela by the United States openly and indirectly by Canada. But someone say, oh, come on, you're, you're exaggerating. You know, Trudeau, uh, after all, does stand up. Oh, yes, I have to criticize myself. Trudeau does also stand up. When Zelensky, representing the fascist government in Ukraine, came, sent a message to parliament, the entire parliament, including Trudeau, they stood up, applauding this representative of a Nazi-infested government. I'll give you another example. Oh, you know, Trudeau, yeah, he does stand up. Just a few weeks ago, Trudeau, instead of going to British Columbia, to calm his RCMP, who are continuing genocide against the native people in Canada. No, no, no. He went to Kiev in Ukraine a week ago, standing up with who? With the fascists in Kiev. So Canadians, you should know about it. And those who are not Canadians, you should also know about it. Because this fraud of the liberal you know, poster boy of Trudeau, this has to come to an end. And I think that it's important for the solidarity movement in Canada, that we throw off the shackles of the concept that we should you know, have to tr treat Trudeau with kid gloves, with velvet gloves. This policy of appeasement for, uh, with regards to Trudeau has been a, a disaster. Has it improved? His position on Cuba, has it improved? His position on Venezuela, has it improved? No, it has gotten worse. So let's put an end to this appeasement policy and let's speak out very clearly. Join me and thousands of people across Canada, I assure you. Trudeau, when the hell are you going to speak up for our friend Cuba? Thank you. Sorry for that four letter word at the end. But... Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, Arnold, um, as I said, writes numerous articles on Latin America and Cuba and the relations uh, also uh, 
world global issues. So I encourage people to look up Arnold and your work on Venezuela as well. Probably the last time we saw each other was actually in, in Venezuela. And I, I hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Uh, you're on mute, Arnold. It was a rocky episode there, but it went very well, and I missed it as well. Okay.